everyone. My name is Angel Chalo from Kitungo Adventist Secondary School. I'm in Form 1. The story of today is about creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let the light be upon the earth. The light separated darkness and light. And God called darkness night and day and daytime light. And God saw it was good. So it was evening, it was morning, one day. And God said that, let it be firmament, firmament and separate waters and waters and God called firmament heavens and, go, and God saw that it was good so it was evening it was morning the second day and God said let the water gather on one place and the dry land appear and God called the waters the seas and the dry land and the dry land earth and God saw it was good. And God said, let the vegetation, the plant trees, and the yielding seeds appear and grow on the earth. And God saw, and God saw it was good. So it was evening, it was morning, the third day. And God said, let the earth on the firmament shine upon the earth. And God created two great lights. God, the greatest light Shine, shined in the daytime and the less light shined night time and God saw it was good so it was morning it was evening the fourth day and God said let the waters create a swarm swarms of living things and birds fly across the firmaments and so God created birds created animals of their kinds and and creatures in the seas and God saw it was good so it was morning it was evening the fifth day and God said let us make a man on our image and our likeness and so God created female and male and blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and he told them that Behold, I have given you fruit to, to eat and feed on them. So it was morning, it was evening, the sixth day. The seventh day, God rested, God sanctified it, God blessed it, and asked all creatures to respect the seventh day, called the seventh day Sabbath day. It was morning, it was evening on the seventh day. And that is the end of the creation of God. In this creation... It shows us the way the Lord is great. He created everything He's created and us on, our, on His likeness. So His love is still with us forever. Amen. Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Suspita Semwai. I'm in Kitungu Adventist Secondary School. In front of you, I'm going to represent about the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1 to 19, about the fall of man. Now the serpent was more substantial than any, any other wild creature that God has made them. And the serpent said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the serpent deceived it to the woman, and the woman ate the forbidden fruit. After ate it, he, she brought it to Adam. And, and Adam, after ate it, the word became cursed. And God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden. The following are the reasons why Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. One, it was desire for knowledge, desire for food, and the present eyes. The following are the events happened immediately after Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. Number one, they hide themselves, they hid themselves, they knew, they knew that they were naked. They seek fig leaves together to make the aprons. The following are the curses to serpent. You shall walk on berry of, 
of all of your days. I will put enemy between you and the woman. He shall he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The following are the curses to Adam. Because of that, you had to return to the ground. All of your days, you you shall eat, you shall eat the plants of the field, thorns and thistles. It shall bring forth to you. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is York Bedwina. I'm in Form 1C at Kitungo Adventist Secondary School. The Covenant Rainbow. This covenant happened after the flood, whereby after the flood has occurred in the earth, God blessed Noah and his family and taught them to fill the earth and multiply. After that, Noah and his family lived a lot of years after they were commanded by God not to eat the blood of the animal, whether it is cooked or not. After that, Noah and his family, after the, as the days went by and by, one day Noah realized that he was supposed to till the ground. When he tilled the ground, he planted the vineyard plant, which he drank and made the wine, of, the wine of it. After making the wine of it, he drank. After drinking, he was drunkard. After he was drunkard, he slept in his tent while he was naked. When he was naked, his son, Ham, came saw the nakedness of his father. When he saw the nakedness of his father, he jumped up and down, he laughed, he played, and he was happy to see it. So he went and called his brothers, who were Japheth and Shem, and told them, Come, everyone come, come and see, dad is naked. After he had told his brothers, his brothers were having the Holy Spirit. They decided to take a, to take a, a garment, and they put it on their shoulders, and they went backward and went to cover their father. So they did not see the nakedness of the father. After Noah was awake, he realized what Ham has done to him. He decided to curse Ham's son, who was Canaan, and said that Canaan will serve Ham, will serve, will serve Shem and Japheth. So this was all about the covenant rainbow. Remember that the covenant rainbow was given out by God so as Noah and his family and all the people in the earth to remember that God is the one who promised to them that he will never destroy the earth with water but one day he will destroy it by fire. In the days of Noah after the flood were 350 days and Noah lived 950 years and he died. Thank you everyone. My name is Irene John from Kitungo Secondary School. I am in Form 1C. I'm going to talk about the Tower of Babel, which it is found in the book of Genesis chapter 11. Babel it is the word that comes from the confusion that God made to the people of land of Shinar that were, were led by their king Nimrod, the son of Cush, the first mighty hunter before the Lord, who they, they decided to build a, a tower that could reach in heaven they wanted to make the name for themselves. They didn't want to be scattered all over the world. And they didn't want to be taken by flood when it comes again. But God decided to confuse their language so that they won't continue with what they were doing. The lesson we get from the, this short story about the Tower of Babel is that we should not plan against the Lord. Greetings to everyone. My name is Sean Monisi. I'm a student from Kitungwa Adventist Secondary School. And today I'm going to talk about Genesis chapter 39, which is about Joseph and Potiphar. And in this we see that Joseph was taken from Canaan by the Ishmaelites, and he was taken to Egypt, and he was bought by Potiphar, who was a servant of Pharaoh, and also he was the captain of the guard, or we say as, as the captain of the army of all the Egyptians in that time. We see that when Joseph was taken by his Egyptian master, he was very loyal and he took God always. And his master found favor in his eyes and overseed him to be the head of the house and his fields. And when you read Genesis chapter 39, verse 26, we see that now Joseph was a handsome and good-looking man. So Potiphar's wife cast her eyes on Joseph for a very long period of time. After a time, she came and told Joseph, Can you lie with me? And Joseph refused and said that, 
how can I do this without my fa- without my master's concern? Because I am nothing to I'm nothing than him in this house. And he gave out everything into my hands. So I cannot do this. And this is a huge sin against the Lord. And the Potif- Potiphar's wife never gave up. She tried after day and day. And one day when Joseph entered into the house, whereby there was no workers who are male, there was only Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife grabbed Joseph by his garment and told him that, Will you lie with me? I repeat, will you lie with me? And Joseph told her that I will not. Uh, Joseph told her that she, he will not, and he ran and left his garment on the hands of the Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife got out of the house and shouted to all the workers who were outside working on the field and told them that this is the Egyptian that this is the Hebrew that my husband brought in the house. He came to insult me. And this is the person who wanted to lay with me, and I refused. And after I cried out loud, he, he ran away and left his garment in my hands. He, she cried like that for a very long time until her husband came back. And after her husband listening to what her wife is saying, he didn't feel good and took Joseph to the prison. And if you want to know more, you can read Genesis chapter 40. But this is where I end. And if you want... And in this chapter you see that even if you're in a very hard case and you know that you can get into trouble you know if you read well you see that Joseph is innocent but an advice to you all is that even if something happens that is bad even if Satan tries to tempt you how hard always stand strong and believe that God is always with you